Good morning, Chapel Change. I believe God has a word for you today. So go ahead and get, grab your Bibles and let's turn to Philippians 4, verse 6 through 7. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, as Pastor Brian said, just I want you to just uh, sit back but lean into this word this morning. Amen. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this, Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. Always giving thanks. And God's peace, which is so great, we cannot understand it, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Psalm 19.14 says these words, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, right? Let, let the words of my mouth match what's in my heart, amen? Let it be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And Philippians straight out tells us, don't worry. And if you're worrying about things today, it's because you're not praying about those things. And so the more you worry, the, le the less you're praying. And the more you're praying, the less you're worrying. So if you're experiencing anxiety and stress and worry in your life today, I believe God has a word for you. I want to suggest to you that it could be that, that you're, you're thinking too much about those issues and your worry and anxiety and stress is going up and you're not praying because the Bible says that when we pray, amen, that our stress level goes down and God's peace will begin to fill our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, amen. A pastor recently gave a, uh, a survey to his church uh, thousands of members and he basically said hey talk to me let me know what give me a one word description about your prayer life and this is what the people said frustrated I feel inept awkward unsatisfied I feel confused I don't understand prayer or I don't understand how it works prayer's a mystery to me but but I want it to be better I need help. I would venture to say that if we were to give the same survey to Chapel of Change and to our community of faith here, that, that some of you may feel the same way. If we were to ask you to describe your prayer life in one word, you may use those same words. Frustrated. Uh, your, your prayer life is unsatisfying. It's unfulfilling. It's, it's unfruitful. It's boring. I don't get this thing called prayer. Not all of you, but some of you may feel that way. And let me read this to you. It says in Romans 8.26 in the New Living Translation, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. Did you know the Bible says that we don't even know how to pray unless God's Spirit helps us to pray? But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. It's comforting to know that when we don't even know the words to say, the Holy Spirit is praying for us to the Father. So we're all in the school of prayer, saints. Whether you're a seasoned saint, whether you're just, you just are exploring this thing called Christianity or you're trying to figure your way through life or, or you've been saved a week or 10 years. We're all in the school of prayer. I've never met anybody that has a PhD in prayer. Say amen. Oh, I have never met anybody that says, I'm, I got this thing down. But I have met a lot of people who know how to pray the glory down. I have met a lot of people who understand who they're praying to. I, I have met a lot of people who, who when they pray, they understand they're praying to God Almighty. Amen. So prayer is something that is learned. It's developed in our life. It's not something that we're born with. So I want to just take that burden off of you, that stress off of you today. Because I believe God wants you to learn how to pray and talk to him. And talking to God should not be difficult. God doesn't want you to make talking to him be, that, uh, be a burden. Amen. Prayer is not a burden. Prayer is a blessing. 
Prayer is not a, a, a drudgery. Prayer is a joy. It's a delight. See, prayer is not something that's meant to intimidate you, but it's something that you can learn and develop in your prayer life. And today, I think I'm going to try to go as basic as I can. This will be a, a, a reminder for those of you who are seasoned saints, but it will also be uh, to help some of you who are just uh, coming into the faith. And you want your prayer life to be stronger. So, so if you're serious about your prayer life, becoming more fulfilling and fruitful and satisfying and, and you want those uh, you want your prayer life to be powerful then I want you to lean into this message today God doesn't want you to feel lousy about your prayer life he doesn't want you to feel guilty about your prayer life God doesn't want you to think about prayer as something that's hard and difficult and it's only for the it's only for the you know the pastors to do and the and the priests and and the, the people of clergy no 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 prayer is a conversation and god wants you to learn how to talk and have a conversation with him you see the devil knows that if he can get you to feel lousy and unsatisfied and unfulfilled about your prayer life he can discourage you from even praying See, if you only prayed when you felt like it, the devil makes sure that you never feel like it. If you only went to church when you felt like it, the devil will make sure that you never feel like it. And if you only sang and worshiped God when you felt like it, the devil makes sure you'll never feel like it. Listen, I don't feel like going to work every day. I don't feel like waking up out of my bed every day, but I get up and I go and get my day started because I, we don't live and move, right, just because of, by our feelings. There's a thing called faith, people. And God wants you to operate in faith. He wants you to push back past your feelings and your emotions. He wants you to, to get past the emotions and get to the faith part and say, I don't feel like praying, but I will pray. I don't feel like having a conversation with God, but I'm going to talk to God. I don't feel like singing and worshiping, but I'm going to sing and worship my God. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you today. I'm going to give you three things that will help you in your prayer life. And I'm calling this message the basics of prayer. The basics of prayer. You see, the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, which is amazing because they saw him raise the dead, right? Open deaf ears, right? Straighten uh, lame feet and, and legs, heal blind eyes. I mean, some, some dynamic type of miracles. And then, and then, but they saw Jesus' prayer life and the disciples didn't ask him, Lord, teach us how to raise the dead or how to heal the blind or no, no. He's, they, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. I think, I think, I think uh, that, that when they saw Jesus' life, amen, they saw that he had a conversation with his father, that he was connected to his father, that God was downloading some things into Jesus. He was giving him clear instructions, showing him where to do, what, where to go, what to do, and how to do it. They saw this power behind Jesus' teaching and his preaching and, and the healing and the miracles. And they knew it, they knew, they knew it was through prayer. And so God wants you to have a dynamic prayer life, saints. God wants you to not feel intimidated with prayer. And so the first point I want to talk to you about today, the basics of prayer is that prayer is personal. Jesus said we are to call God our Father. Now Jesus spoke in the Aramaic language and that term Father in the Middle East means Abba, Daddy, Papa. It's a term of endearment. It's a term of, of love. It, it, it connotes relationship, a closeness. You don't call everybody your daddy. You don't, you call God, the, God, Jesus said call him Father, which means Daddy, Papa, God, my provider, my protector, help me, Lord. Now, he doesn't say call him the big man upstairs or, or the big guy in the sky. No, 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 no. You see, those terms doesn't connote a relationship. It doesn't express that. 
But when you say our father, my God, my father in heaven, my loving, perfect heavenly father who's unlike any earthly father I've ever had or ever seen. You have a good, good father. I had a good father, but he was flawed. He was, he was, he was imperfect. He tried his best, but he'll never be my heavenly father. See, your father God is kind. He's considerate. He's not far. He's not aloof. He's not disconnected. He's close. Your heavenly father is consistent. I get it. Some of you uh, uh, connect your earthly father with your heavenly father and you're going, "I, I can't, I can't. Listen, God is not anything like your heavenly father. God is consistent. He's a promise keeper. He's a way maker. When he says he's going to do something, he'll do it. He's capable. He's strong and he's able like a good heavenly father. He's loving, he's caring, and he's a perfect father. So if Jesus said, call God your father, he's expressing that relationship, that closeness, that term of endearment. I got a question for you. What do you call, what do you call God when you pray? Do you say, God, hey, big guy in the sky, I mean, the man upstairs? No. Jesus said, call him your father. Jesus came to show us what the father is like. And so he instructs us to call him your father. And I want to challenge you today. When you pray, if you haven't started, call God your father. Because Jesus said to call him your father. If you're born again, saved, blood washed and sanctified by Jesus, God is your father. I challenge you to start seeing God that way and calling him father. Why? Because he loves you. He's unlike any earthly father. Psalm 103.13 says this. The Lord is like a father to his children. Listen, he's tender and compassionate to those who fear him. He's a loving father. Personal God. Prayer should be personal. It's your Father in heaven that loves you. The second thing is that prayer is passionate. If your prayer life is boring, if it's unfulfilling and unsatisfying, I want to suggest to you that maybe, just maybe, it's because you're talking to God about things that you really don't care about. You're talking to God about things you think God wants you to talk about. You're talking to God about things that you really don't have any interest in. Nothing that draws passion from your heart. Your prayers are stiff and repetitive and they lack emotion and there's no fire. Because you think you have to try to impress God with your words. You're afraid to say something wrong or or something that will make you sound dumb. Listen to me. God says, talk to me. You're my children. I'm your father and I love you perfectly. I want you to talk to me because prayer is a conversation. I want to hear what's on your heart. I want to know what matters to you. I want to know what you care about. I want to know your dreams, your goals, your passions, that thing that drives passion from your heart. God cares about that. Some of you today are worried about children and and your kids and you're worried about the bills. You're drowning in bills and finances. God wants you to talk to him about those things. What is it that interests you? God wants you to talk to him about your career. He wants you to talk to him about your plans. He wants you to talk to him about your future. He wants you to talk to him about your anxieties. He wants you to talk to him about your health. He wants you to talk to him about your failures. He wants you to talk to him about your sin. He wants you to talk to him about that temptation you're drowning in. He wants you to talk and be passionate and be real. Don't be cute with your prayers. God don't want you to be cute with your prayers. Excuse me, I need to get a drink of water. Hallelujah. Listen to Matthew 11, 28. It says this. Come to me. 
Do you hear that invitation? Do you hear the passion of the Father of Christ? He says, come, come to me. He's inviting you to come. He says, all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. We're stressed out today. We're living high stress lives. There's anxiety and worry and fear and, and uncertainty all around us. But God says, come to him, all who are weary and burdened. He said, he'll give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus said. For I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. First Peter 5, 7 says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your cares on God because he cares for you. Prayer should be passionate, my friends. Brothers and sisters, you, 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 your prayer life should not be boring and lifeless and stiff. Amen. Your prayer life should be powerful because you're talking to God about things that concern you. You matter to God and he cares about you. And he's saying to cast all your cares upon him. Because he cares for you. Amen. And finally, the Bible says that our prayer should be sincere and simple. What does that mean? What does sincere mean? It comes from the heart. There's no pretense. There's no flowery words. There's no religious jargon. You just talk from the heart. Amen. Simple means being authentic, being real, being gutsy and honest. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you can read some of the Psalms. About a third of the Psalms, David prays these prayers. They're called laments. They're called, they're complaints. You ever complain to God? David says, God, where were you when I needed you? David is in the midst of a battle and he's about to lose and he doesn't see God and, and, and he's lost, he's confused, he's worried, his stress level is up and he, gives, he says, God, where are you? Where are you when I need you? You ever talk to God like that? That's real, that's gutsy, that's honest, that's authentic kind of prayer. I guarantee you, you pray like that, your prayer life will not be boring. Your prayer life will be honest and sincere and simple. You don't have to use any flowery language and use old first century old English. These and thou, thou father potentate in heaven, creator, God. Of, no, 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 no. Just pray simple but sincere words. No religious cliches. You just talk to God. You don't have to sound like Shakespeare. Sometimes the simplest prayers are the most powerful prayers. I remember in the, in the Bible when, when, when Peter was walking on water and he began to take his eyes off of Jesus, right? And he begins to sink. Peter didn't have time for a flowery prayer. He said, help! My brothers and sisters, that is a prayer. Help me, God. Drowning in this temptation. I don't know what a handle is. My heart is full of lust. God, help me, Lord. God, I got an overeating problem. Help me, Jesus. God, I'm drowning in these bills and these tears and, and this, this issues and problems. God, help me. Be honest. Be sincere. Be real with God. Can I tell you something? God is not shocked at your sin. He is not shocked by anything you have to tell him. You're not going to surprise him. He already knows. He wants you to come clean and, be, and confess. And he wants you to be honest and real and authentic. In fact, when you don't feel like talking to God, tell him. That's a prayer. God, I don't feel like talking to you today. But I, I, I know I need to, so help me, Lord. Give me, give me the passion. Put passion and fire back into my prayer life, Lord. When you're angry, when you're angry at God, talk to him. Lord, I'm mad at you. I've been praying about this job. I, I, I'm still waiting and, I, and I'm in debt, Lord. Help me, God. What, what's going on? Is there obviously something I don't know that you don't know? Could you help me? Open my mind. Teach me. Show me another way. Help me. What, what, what is going on, Lord? Gutsy, real prayers. Be honest. 
See, longer is not stronger. <laughs> you don't have to say a bunch of words. You know, Christians pray one request and they say it in nine different ways. You got one job at a prayer meeting, and I've been to these kinds of prayer meetings, and the pastor says, well, you pray about brother so-and-so and his illness and God to help him. And then they find nine different ways and they talk about the value of the hospital and the value of the medical and, and all that. No, 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 you have to talk about the science. Just pray and be honest. Be real. Get to the point. God isn't impressed with that. What he's impressed with is your simplicity, is your sincerity. It is your, it is your, it is your heart, your humility God is impressed with. So if your friend's having surgery, you can simply pray something like this, Lord, my friend is having surgery tomorrow. Please help the doctors not to make any mistakes. Help them have a quick recovery and, and minimal pain. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. Keep it simple and keep it sincere. Praise the Lord. Listen to Matthew 6, verse 5 through 8. It says this, and when you pray, isn't it interesting when you pray? Look, look at that phrase, when you pray. Jesus didn't say if you pray. He already assumed you're going to have to pray. He says when you pray, he knows that you were wired to pray. He knows that there are going to be moments in your life you're going to call out for help. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, Jesus said. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, the Bible says, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, the Bible says, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So the point of this, of this passage is simply say, don't show off with your prayers. Don't try to impress people with your prayers. Prayer is not performance. Prayer is, is a conversation with God. And God wants you to be real and honest, sincere and humble. Longer is not stronger. Father knows all that is in your heart. He just wants you to come clean to him. You don't have to spend 20 minutes convincing God that you need a job. You don't have to spend 20 minutes convincing God that you need healing in your body. You don't have to spend 20 minutes convincing God that you want to serve him and you want your prayer life to be powerful and fruitful and satisfying. Today I want to encourage you, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, Chapter, 20, uh, chapter 10, verse 22, it says these words. Let us come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith because we have been made free from a guilty conscience. Let me read that again. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us come near to God with what? A sincere heart and a sure faith because we have been made free from a guilty conscience. Friends, make your prayer life personal. Refer to God. If you're not referring to God as your father, start calling him your father. Because what you refer to somebody sets the tone for that relationship. How you refer to somebody sets the tone for that relationship. He is your loving heavenly father. He cares about you. Make it passionate. Pray about things that really you really care about. That matter to you. Because... They matter to God. And keep your prayers simple and sincere. I pray that this message will help you to build your prayer life. It will set you up for the rest of your life, the basics of prayer. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for this word. I pray that those that have leaned in this morning... Lord, will receive from you manna from above. Lord, strengthen them for the journey. Teach them. Teach them, Lord, that talking to you shouldn't have to be difficult. Talking to you is not for just a certain group of people. That having a conversation with you is all about being sincere and simple and having faith. Thank you that we can approach you. Thank you, Father, for letting Jesus come to teach us about you. 
dying on the cross for our sins, making a way to have a f- relationship with our Father. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Take a moment right now, and I want you just to reflect on what you heard today. If you need to listen to this recording after uh, it, it goes off live, and just take some notes and lean into God's Word. Let's reflect on the Word of God.